Svelte 5 is almost out, and they're previewing a new state management model called runes that you can opt into. There are four runes that symbolize the state management signals primitives that you can use. There is state where you can define state. There is derived where you can create computed state. There is effect where you can create asynchronous behaviors based on changes to state. And then there is props that allow you to get signals as props in from props. And the runes are dwarven runes. I'm not sure why that's important, but I looked enough into it to try and figure out where these runes came from. And they are dwarven runes from Lord of the Rings, as far as I can tell. Why that's important, I have no idea, but now you know. I'm going to walk through all of the different runes, show you how they work, show you some pitfalls that you might run into as you're working with runes, and then we'll go behind the scenes and see how the transpiler is turning the Svelte code using runes into JS, and hopefully that will be helpful if that abstraction of the runes leaks, which it might. All right, let's get right into it. All right, so here's the Svelte 5 Interactive Playground. It's dynamic, you can just make changes and they automatically show up. It gets compiled in real time and run, and that's really cool. Over here, there's the JS output, which we'll be taking a look at in a little bit. That is the JavaScript that's generated by the Svelte transpiler. There's also the CSS output. We're not gonna be doing any CSS, we're not gonna see anything in there. All right, let us go do the simple counter to take a look at the first rune, which is the state rune. So we'll start by defining a count, and then we'll use the state rune. Now the state rune has created a signal, and we can get the value of a signal by just accessing the signal. Now let's go and add a button that'll increment that count. To do that, we'll use an on click. And then we just increment the value of that signal just like it was a simple variable. It's pretty easy, actually. There you go. Now, the second rune is called derived, and it allows you to derive the value of a new signal from existing signals. Let's go and create a triple value that just triples the count. So we'll use derived, and we'll say count times three. And we can see that whenever count changes, tripled automatically updates. Fantastic. Now let's go and take a look at what the actual syntax is that the transpiler has created. So right at the top here, you can see that they're taking everything in Svelte internal and assigning it to dollar. So anywhere you see dollar dot, that is just a function that's coming out of Svelte internal. And you can see that they're mapping dollar derived to dollar dot computed. So that's a, the computed function that's coming out of Svelte internal. And they're just giving it a function. And that function is then calling dollar dot get to get the value, the current value of the count signal and then multiplying it by three. Now this is where we get syntactically a little bit tricky. Because we're not using a function, it's not really clear how this expression will work across multiple lines. Like, let's say that I want to replace this with a really simple ABS, where if the count is greater than zero, then multiply by three. If the count is less than zero, we multiply by negative three. This is a stupid thing to do, but you can see it runs across multiple lines, and that's not going to work. So everything you need to do needs to fit on a single line, or you could create a function that would do this stupid absolute and actually invoke it right there. In fact, let's just do that. So we'll create a stupid absolute function and then we'll call stupid absolute with the count. Now the transpiler is smart enough to know that the count that's referenced in the computed is the signal count where the count that's in stupid absolute is just a local variable called count. But let's not do our stupid absolute. Let's just go back to tripled, and I do want to show you that you can derive values from other derived values. So let's create a tripled times 10. And now as tripled changes, so does tripled 10. So you can derive values from other derived values or other signals. It's really a nice way to model your state. All right, let's talk about the props rune. To do that, we'll create another component. We'll just copy this component and call it counter. I want to make the count a prop so that it can start with whatever value we want. So we'll just use props. So from props, we'll get all the props we want. In this case, that's just count. And we can even give it a default value. And then we can import that into our Svelte app. And then just invoke it. And then give it whatever starting point we want. 
And we can even use it multiple times. And there you go. They're independently maintained, of course, because they're different components. Now, the cool thing about this dollar props is it basically creates signals from the props values, and they're by default then reactive. So the last rune is the effect rune. The effect rune allows you to create side effect code that depends on some of the values in your signals. So to do that, let's go and make a Pokemon request. So go back over to Svelte. We'll use the state rune to create two signals. One is the ID, that would be the ID of the Pokemon we're gonna fetch. And then name, which would be the name of the Pokemon that we fetched from the Pokemon API that has that ID. So we'll start off at the top with a div that has our input in it for the ID. So we can just change that ID to whatever ID we want. And then we'll create an effect, and that effect will then go and make the Pokemon API request using that ID, and we can just use it like a value because it's going to, in the transpiler, take ID and turn it into ID.get. And then once we have the result back, we can set the name to whatever that name is, and then let's display the name down here. Hey, Bulbasaur, Caterpie, whatever. Nice, that's actually really clean. Now, so far we've only been using scalars like strings and numbers. How's this gonna work with arrays? Let's find out. So create a new playground. Now let's use the state rune to create a list of names. So we're gonna use an array of names. We're gonna use Jack, Jane, and Jill. And now we wanna be able to edit those names. So let's go and create a list of inputs. All right. So this is looking pretty good. We can certainly type in there and that's great. But are we actually changing the values in the state? So let's go and create another display that displays the same state in a read-only way so we can make sure that that's actually tracking. So we'll just create an unordered list that shows the names. And it seems to be tracking so far, but let's make a change. And yeah, we've lost reactivity. So what's happening here is that the array of names is reactive, but the values within the array are not reactive. And that's actually what we're changing. So we're just changing our local copy of name inside that bind. So one easy way to fix this would just be to use the index of the item in the array. So get in the index and then we'll say, okay, edit that value within there. And then this is actually reactive. The issue here is that we're not actually getting fine-grained reactivity. Anytime I make a change to that array, the entire set of both of these arrays, both of the set of divs and inputs, and also the UL and all of that is all getting essentially re-rendered. So we don't want that. So how can we go and make each item reactive? Well, let's go and remove this, get back to where we started. Cool. Now it's, I don't know, let's just go and make everyone a state. So now I've gone and made every element inside of the array its own state. That's not gonna work because of a compilation error. So what's happening here is that we need to assign the value of state to a let value. Okay, well, let's do that. Let's go and create Jack, Jane, and Jill as independent state values and then just merge them into that array. And this, well, it kind of works, but it, we lost that reactivity again. Now, the reason for this one is a little complex, but it is covered in the documentation. Over in the fine-grained reactivity section, you can see down at the bottom where they actually give an option for this, and that's to use getters and setters inside of this array. So let's go try that out. Now we replaced our simple array with an array of objects. Each one of those objects has a getter and setter for name. You get the name, and then you set the name. And then down here, we would do dot name and dot name. And now it's fully reactive. So one of the concessions I had to make here was to create objects for each one of our names to use that dot name. But it still works and it's reactive and, and that's great. Now over on the Svelte Discord in the runes channel, there's a lot of talk about all of this and someone came up with a runify function that you give it an object or you give it an array and it automatically uh, recursively adds state to everything. So let's bring in runify. And I'll post the code for this in a gist associated with the video in the description right down below. Now back over in our app, let's replace all of this code with an import of runify and then we'll just run runify on an array that has each one of those objects in it. And let's see, yes, it is dynamic because runify has gone and gone through each one of the items in the array using a map, 
run itself on each item in the array, seeing that each item is an object, and then effectively done what we did by creating a getter and setter for each object in that array. And that, at the end, is not actually too bad. So I imagine that any big application is probably going to have one of these runify type functions in it. Maybe it'll even make it into a library, which is actually kind of interesting because are we going to run the transpiler on the libraries that we use with Svelte 5? I don't know. If we don't, we're actually going to need to know about the primitives that are behind the scenes. And we've gone through a couple already with set and with get, but here's what's actually happening behind the scenes. So dollar state is becoming source. And anytime you get a value, that's get. Anytime you set a value of a signal, that's set. Anytime you want to create a computed value in runes, you call it dollar derived, that actually becomes computed and becomes a function invocation. Effect is actually the same. It's effect, which is great. And then the props for rune becomes prop source. Then you give it the props, you give it the name of the property you want, and the default value. Now, I didn't learn all of this on my own. I just looked at the JS output and figured this out for myself, and you can do that as well. All right, well, I hope this helps you understand more about the runes coming in Svelte 5, what they are, how to maintain reactivity if you've lost it, and how they work internally. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. If you want to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to get notified when new videos like this come out, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click on that bell.